taught a retirement class this morning and there were a lot of questions about the spousal benefit for Social Security. How do we maximize the spousal benefit? So we're gonna do a video on that in a second. First, I wanna share how this all plays together in your retirement plan. Here's what I look at. I always look at creating streams of income. I look at reducing volatility of investments because volatile markets and volatile portfolios lead to bad decisions. Number three, how to reduce taxes. Number four, making sure we account for healthcare, Medicare Part A, Part B, uh, Medigap Part D out of pocket. If you are not counting healthcare year by year, you're missing out. And how to maximize Social Security. Everything is so that we can have a situation where you're able to spend more money when you're younger and healthier. So let's get into it about the Social Security. And I'm gonna use myself as an example. My spot, my uh, full retirement age benefit, which is at 67, is about $3,300. Now this does not mean I have to work till 67, it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that my full retirement age benefit per SSA.gov, if you haven't made an account at SSA.gov, go there and do it, is about $3,300. But this is a video about the spousal benefit. How do we maximize the spousal benefit? So my very favorite wife, Jill, is about a year and a half younger than me. So she's about 18 months younger than me. If we are to collect her full spousal benefit, which is 50% of my full retirement age benefit, we have to wait until she's 67. We have to wait until her full retirement age. So for her, it's also 67. So here's how it works. Now these numbers will change by the way with inflation over time. But if my benefit is 3,300, then her full retirement age benefit is going to be $1,650. But here's the key. She has to wait till she's 67. And if she's gonna wait till she's 67, it means that I have to wait until she's 67. We can't do it separately. We're, there's a concept known as deemed filing. If I'm filing, she's deemed to file as well. So in order to maximize her benefit, which with current numbers can only be $1,650, we have to wait until she's 67. That means I couldn't collect until I was about 68 and a half. Now, I'll get the benefit at 68 and a half, whatever that benefit is, it would be higher than this, but she's capped out at $1,650. So how do we maximize spousal benefit? Uh, we wait until the spouse is at least full retirement age. Now, other things we can do is I can work harder, I guess, and I can see, see it that my benefit goes higher, which would mean that her benefit would presumably go higher. It's kind of hard when you get into your 50s, let's call it, for the benefit to go higher. Uh, but so if we're, to, if we're to collect more on her benefit, um, then we have to wait until she's full retirement age. If she takes earlier than that, then it, the benefit's going to be smaller. Now, one quick point about all this before I conclude this video. Everybody talks about a break-even analysis for Social Security, right? There's a break-even analysis. You've got to live a certain amount of time. And I'll tell you um, that my, uh, my father-in-law just passed away at 81. Now, he was an optometrist, and he worked his whole life until about five years ago. He was working very productively. So um, one could say that if he collected at 70, he made a bad decision, right? Because he only made it to 81. That doesn't matter, right? We just can't see the future. So I like to say we're not we're not algorithms. We're not um, we're not spreadsheets. We're people. It is not always necessary to take to make the most optimal Social Security claiming decision. If you want the most optimal, then you have to wait until the spouse is full retirement age. It's just a small uh, piece of the puzzle. And thanks for watching.